Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we can have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GFS and ECMWF ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office precipitation and temperature over the next five days. Now we have quite a pleasant day today really with a lot of sunshine for many, a few uh, thicker clouds and some patchy showers earlier but it's been pretty sunny but chilly with an easterly flow and you can see we have got high pressure in control and that's going to continue over the next few days. We were potentially hinting at, maybe three or four days ago, proper easterly winds. Now we're seeing an easterly flow at the moment but it does look like that westerly flow is going to win out as ever this winter. Whenever we see anything potentially colder, as we get nearer to the time, it does fizzle away. So it does look like we're going to be seeing more of a westerly flow. But we are seeing some battleground scenarios potentially in the longer term with the Skadi even high holding on um, up against the westerly flow. And we are even seeing potentially southerly winds. That is a real possibility over the next 10 days and it could bring some early spring warmth. And we'll have a look at that in detail in this video. Just remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So we do start on the latest GFS, you can see the high pressure we have over the top of the UK at the moment, pulling in a slack easterly flow. Now you can see we have pretty chilly air over the southern half of the United Kingdom. We have a look at the upper air temperatures. You can see getting down to sort of minus 7 degrees at 850 HPA. It's going to give widespread overnight frost where we have clear skies. And it's going to mean it's, going to, it's, it's felt chilly, sorry. And if we did see any precipitation, it probably would fall a little bit wintry. Um, so pretty cold air mass really. But it's not going to last um, and it's going to move away pretty quickly. And if we continue, you can see we continue with a bit of an easterly flow before it turns more to a southerly flow by Tuesday as we start to see Atlantic weather systems push in. It's going to try and push rain in, but the high pressure over Europe and towards Scandinavia is trying to hold on and it's going to block those weather fronts a little bit, slow them down and reduce their intensity. Beyond that, though, we continue to see these low pressures spin out in the middle of the Atlantic, high pressure over Scandinavia and Europe, and eventually it does look like it could start to feed a southerly wind in. We do see a bit of low pressure there, but you can see right around sort of the day 10 period, GFS really showing a quite a balmy southerly wind, potentially really quite warm there, a good 10 degrees potentially above average if we look at those temperature deviations. Real warmth is possible. Um, as we see with the ensembles, this is definitely on the warmer end of the ensemble spectrum, and you can see it is only a small pool of warm air. Um, and it would give temperatures in the mid to high teens for the middle of March. Very interesting seeing this. It is, a, it is only one scenario, but there is real possibility with this. If we do have a look at the uh, pressure charts again, you can see it, it doesn't last too long. It gets pushed away by more Atlantic weather systems, and in the longer term, we stay pretty westerly. But high pressure continually start or tries to dominate and try and head over the top and to the east of the UK, trying to turn things more settled. This is going to be a battleground between high pressure and low pressure, and at times we could see a squeeze of ice bars bringing up air from the south, which can could turn warmer. So nothing too drastic, but just something to keep an eye on. There's going to be dry days, there are going to be wet days, uh, it's going to be a real mixed bag over the next couple of weeks. Now if we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure over the top of the UK at the moment. Then we do see low pressure pushing off the Atlantic. High pressure trying to hold on. A bit more low pressure dominated this GM run with the high pressure shifted a few hundred miles further eastwards. And eventually we do see that high pressure trying to build back over. Um, and if we look at the upper air temperatures, you can see there is a mild wedge of air trying to come up from the south. But you can see a real strong jet stream with cold air in the North Atlantic, mild air over Central Europe, and it's going to be really powering up the jet stream. And you can see the UK is going to be sort of flip-flopping in and out of milder and colder sectors. Yeah, so nothing too drastic on the GEM run. Not showing the high pressure building too much, and you can see the real warm air is staying well to our south. So GEM really is, is not a great run uh, if you're looking for anything drier and maybe a little bit warmer. Um, it's much wetter with that. High pressure pushed further eastwards, meaning we're more in the cooler Atlantic airflow. Meaning temperature is going to be around average, um, uh, to maybe even below average at times, and we're going to be seeing wet and windy weather. So not looking good on the GEM run today. 
But if we have a look at the yeast and air front, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure over the top of the UK, a bit of a slack easily. Then we see low pressure trying to run in from the Atlantic. And it does succeed initially before the high pressure sort of squeezes out and rebuilds over the top of the UK. And at day 10, we are under high pressure. Low pressure all locked to over Greenland. And we can see we are in a generally quite mild air, air flow around or above average. So giving temperatures in the mid-teens potentially. But you can see cold air is never too far away. Real locked in cold over Greenland and northern Canada. And if that spills out of the Arctic, it could spin up some lows and, and turn the UK potentially a little bit cooler and re really unsettled potentially in the longer term. And that's something we need to keep an eye on. So GEFS run today has definitely been the more optimistic run in terms of being a little bit more settled and potentially pulling up some warmth from the south. GM and Eastern Drift runs have definitely got more of a westerly influence trying to bring in the air more in from the west, um, turning things maybe a little bit cooler, um, but also quite a bit more unsettled with that as well. Now, if you do have a look at the ensemble, see how those do compare. You can see the GFS today, real up and down, pretty chilly at the moment, then returning to around or above average over the next sort of five days. And it can stay around there for the rest of the run, really. Some cooler sectors, some milder sectors. You can see the long term where that GFS operation run is, that thicker green line. That is quite a mild outlier. It's got some support, but it is generally a milder outlier. Um, bring up real balmy conditions from the south, and it would give temperatures in the mid to high teens. Po it's possible, but at this stage, it's very much um, uh, uh, sort of on the fringe of the ensembles. If we do to have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see that operational run potentially getting temperatures up in London to 17 degrees, uh, sort of 16, 17 degrees for a few days there. So, really warm, um, and locally could even get up to 20 degrees if we did see that scenario. And now, of course, it is unlikely to play out exactly, exactly like that, but it is a scenario. Um, we have to take that into account. And I wouldn't be surprised if it did come off. The lack of cold we've had so far this winter, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the first sort of warmth potential we do get comes off. So we'll have to see how it does develop. I have been sort of warning about this over the last couple of days, that this is very possible with a high-pressure system over to our east that doesn't quite get further north to be northern blocking, bringing colder air. Uh, it does have the possibility up against a strong Atlantic to bring up southerly winds, and that's something we need to keep an eye on. But on the other hand, other models have the temperatures down at sort of six, seven degrees. So, uh, or other ensemble members have it down at six, seven degrees, which is very much cooler than average. So, no definitive signal, but definitely the potential there, maybe of the first hints potentially um, of seeing some spring warmth. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF ensemble, see how they do compare today. Similar in terms of a lot of up and down, pretty chilly at the moment, then returning to around or above average and staying around or above average for the foreseeable future. Quite a few warm runs around sort of the 13th, 14th March onwards. Now, of course, I've said this before, East of the F uh, ensembles have a lot, a lot load more ensembles, so you expect more outliers. But there definitely is quite a few going to, to that 5 to 10 degree line, which is a good 5 degrees above average, turning temperatures uh, probably into the mid-teens. So pretty warm for uh, for March. And it's something we need to keep an eye on. On the other hand, there are some still going pretty cold, uh, but there isn't um, but, but there isn't too much of a signal of that. And and if it w did go cold, it most likely would be a transient sort of colder sector in off a, and of a vigorous low-pressure system. Precipitation of both the GFS and the Eastern AF ensembles has been reasonably low, maybe peaking around 10th to 14th of March with uh, that low pressure system that looks like it could park over the top of the UK for a period of time before coming a bit of a cutoff low. Um, but other than that, nothing too crazy in the east, but further west was definitely his favoured for more precipitation. Now, if we finish up the video by having a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature over the next five days. Now, you can see at the moment, very nice indeed. Some cloud around in the south especially, but generally a lot of sunshine and pretty pleasant. Cloud is going to build at times over the next couple of days, but generally it's still going to be pretty sunny for many. Weather fronts are going to approach from the southwest by Tuesday into parts of Ireland, Wales, southwest England, and it's going to push through, bringing precipitation, but it is going to fizzle away as it does move in. And we see another weather front push in, and it does make its way through uh, in sort of central areas, but again, fizzles away, and the far southeast could stay away from any of this precipitation. Through Thursday into Friday, another weather front pushes in, and it does make more progress, but again, really slow um, progression. Now, it won't be the heaviest rain, 
But as it's moving so slowly, it could dump a lot of rain in uh, over the course of sort of 12 hours or so. So it is one to keep an eye on. It is still sort of three, four, five days away. So it can, it, it's still subject to change. Exact positioning, uh, exact uh, timings can change. But at the moment, it does look like it's going to be dry the next two or three days before precipitation is slowly going to edge in from the west as low pressure systems try to make more of an advance. Now, if we do have a look at the max temperatures, you can see today it was pretty chilly. Widely six or seven degrees, a degree or two below average. Some areas seeing maybe eight or nine degrees locally, but most areas are in the mid single digits. Tonight it's going to get cold. Uh, many areas are going to get down to freezing. A few areas maybe hovering around two or three degrees, but most areas are going to get down to around freezing. Locally, it could be colder than that in the north. Tomorrow is going to be another chilly day, especially in the southeast with that easterly flow. Temperatures potentially getting down to uh, getting up only to four or five degrees. Elsewhere, with a bit more cloud, maybe 7 or 8 degrees, um, trapping in the warmth a little bit more. For Monday night, another widespread frost, widely around freezing once again. Tuesday, still chilly for a few areas, maybe 6, 7 degrees, but air is starting to pick up, maybe 9 or 10 degrees as some milder air pushes in. Tuesday night, not quite as cold, maybe 13, 14 degrees through Wednesday before another colder sector tries to push in for the north, turning things cold in the north. But by Thursday, you can see temperatures 15 or 16 degrees. That just that just shows you what a bit of a milder sector can do this time of year with more sunshine. And Friday, potentially another milder day, 13, 14 degrees quite widely across England um, and Ireland into the north as well, um, getting to around 11 or 12. So turning a little bit milder towards the end of the week, but more precipitation as well. We are now getting to the time of year where any warmth from the south bit of sunshine we can see those temperatures really climb so it's going to be one to keep an eye on over the next couple of weeks there is real potential of some spring warmth but once again no guarantees uh, and we'll have to keep an eye on it so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon